let's say we were asked to solve this equation. And again, it's asking for the exact solutions, meaning that they're gonna give us something that we don't need a calculator for. And in this case, it's using theta. And therefore, we're gonna use zero to 360. Again, including zero, excluding 360 because they're the same point. Now already, I know I'm looking at this angle for cosine. And I know an angle for cosine that gives me root two over two. My reference angle for this thing would be 45 degrees. Now I say of this thing because what we do not have is actually theta or x like we normally would. This time our angle is actually theta over two. Now keep in mind, we also have another thing to worry about, and that is all the solutions between zero and 360 that give us a negative root two over two. And in this case, we know that negatives for cosine do not occur in one or four, but rather two and three. And so we'll be using 180 degrees and subtracting 45 and adding 45, which is our reference angle to get that. So for this, I know my angle that we're dealing with, which happens to be theta over two, would be equal to 180 minus 45 for quadrant two, and then 180 plus 45 for quadrant three. And that would give us two different values for our angle, which happens to be theta over two, or one half theta, which would be 135 degrees for quadrant two and 225 degrees for the other, quadrant three. So now, remember our goal as always, anytime we're asked to solve an equation is to get the variable by itself. Now I'll be tasked with getting theta by itself. And since it's being multiplied, I'll undo that by multiplying by two. Since it's being divided by two, multiply both sides of my equation by two so that the two over two becomes one and I get my answer of theta. Now I just got to double 100 and 35 and that would give me 270 degrees. Over here, same idea, that becomes a one, double 200 and double 25, that gives me 450 degrees. But if you notice, Remember from the beginning, they asked us only for things between zero and 360. And since 450 is not, we will only have one answer instead of the normal two that we would have if it was just cosine theta. So the process is very similar to what we've done in the past. That's why they included this as still the same type of trig equations, but even though we have a multiple in there, it will play a little bit differently than what we've done in the past. So I'm gonna show you another type that has a little bit different look to it. So coming over here to part B, we got a little bit more work to do, but already you guys should probably guess how many solutions would there be to this. And so hopefully you see that no matter what this angle is here, this time it's two times. And so if I had cosine of an angle equals first step, divide by two, I get cosine of an angle is equal to negative one half. And so in this case, you know that there would be two answers and hopefully you know exactly what they are. But because we have two X, that means what are we gonna end up having? Hopefully you answered twice as many in, twice as many solutions. So in this case, I'm looking for the angle for cosine that gives me not only one half, but negative one half. And so looking at the quadrants, we know that we are not positive in this case. So we would have to throw out quadrants one and four, and we'd be working in quadrants two and three. And because we're in two and three, we need to now know what angle for cosine gives us positive, or excuse me, negative one half. And so cosine of what angle gives us one half? Hopefully we all know that. 
that would be a reference angle of 60 degrees, or in this case, pi over three. And since we're dealing with pi here, I'm gonna rewrite it as three pi over three and both subtract and add one to get my solutions. So two X is gonna be equal to two pi over three and two X is gonna be equal to four pi over three. And now remember, because it's two, we're gonna have twice as many possible answers, which means we're gonna to have to add two pi to each of these. And then we're gonna to have to divide by two. So in this case, I will take my two X and I will say two pi over three plus, rewrite this, multiply it by three, that would give us six pi over three times n. And then the other one, four pi over three plus six pi over three n. And then lastly, to make sure that we got this down correctly, we got to, we have to make sure that we get the x by itself by multiplying all this by one half. And so this would cancel out and we get x equals two pi over six plus six pi over six. And then this one down here, we have four pi over six plus six pi over six in times. So now I'll take these two things and I will supply all of my answers by taking, remember the n is two, so I will use zero and one. I don't go to two because remember, we just want twice as many answers and we don't need any rotations for the first solution set. So in this case, I will come down here and I will use those two values. And so my first answer would come out to just be two pi over six or pi over three. And then my other would be adding that six pi over six for that extra one revolution, which would actually give me eight pi over six. Or if I reduce that, simplified it, it would give me another solution of four pi over three. Now I have to repeat that again with the four pi over six. So I'll also take four pi over six and add the six pi over six in. And remember the first one will just be the four pi over six. I don't need the extra revolution around, but simplifying that would give me two pi over three as my first solution. And then if I add the six pi over six, that one revolution around, I would end up with 10 pi over six, which would be five pi over three. Again, we had to make sure that we were between zero and two pi. So since all of our answers are over three, we know two pi is equal to six pi over three. And if you look at all of our solutions here, 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 and there, we do not have anything larger than six pi over three. So these are definitely more labor intensive, no doubt about that. But keep in mind, you guys know the process of it all. It's just when do you add the two pi or 360 at the end of it all? And the biggest mistake that students make is they will do it here instead. So you gotta be very careful. Make sure that you get your angles and you solve all of that with the two pi in it rather than at the end. So just be careful with that. All right, here's another type. Here's the last type that I'm gonna do with you all. Uh, just to kind of get you through this. Uh, hopefully, if you need more practice, we can meet up on Zoom and, and do some more. But um, these just require practice, but hopefully you're understanding all of the concepts. So this last type you can see has not only one trig function, but it also includes one with a single angle X and another with a double angle. So as soon as you see double angles, that's just like you see a trig function that has a squared, you should be thinking if it's squared, Pythagorean. If you see a double angle, you should be thinking of an identity. 
Unfortunately, of course, the one that I chose is cosine. And it has three different options for the double angle. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and take one of my favorite for the cosine double angle. And that is 2 cosine squared x minus 1. And I will replace all of that with cosine 2x. And I'll still have minus cosine. The one good thing is they did give it equal to 0. So that's an added bonus. Now, all I'm going to do is rearrange a little bit. I'm going to flip-flop the negative 1 and the negative cos x so that you can see, hopefully, the form of this starts to look familiar. So this one I just had an extra step. I actually think the types in example 2 are a little bit more involved. Um, even though this one had a double angle, like the previous example I just did, it doesn't require us to do the whole n equals 0 to n equals one for both solutions in the two different quadrants, whether they're both the positive answers or the two negative answers. This, hopefully you can see it resembles by just letting this part equal u. I can rewrite this as two u squared minus u minus one equals zero. And if you didn't see it before, hopefully you see it now, this is something that we can definitely factor. So in order to factor this, hopefully you remember your rules, trinomial factoring. I know that it's going to have to be a 2u times u to get 2u squared, and I know it has to be a 1 times a 1. I don't even have to really think on that. I also know that the signs are going to have to be different in order to multiply to a negative 1. But I got to make sure that wherever I put the signs that I get a negative 1 when I combine them after foiling or distributing. So I know I need a negative, so I'm looking at the bigger number because everything else has ones, right? There's a one here, there's a one there. So in this case, I'm going to take the two and I'm going to multiply to make sure that I get a negative. I'm going to put the negative there and the positive there. And if you check, when you FOIL and distribute this out, you'd get your two u squared, you'd get your negative one at the ends, and then I get a negative two u and a positive one u to get my negative one u in the middle. So I factored it correctly. And now I got to go back and replace what I originally let u equal. Now after you guys practice these enough, you'll probably just skip the u subs and just go directly into rewriting it to this, which would be two cosine x plus one times cosine x minus one equals zero. And hopefully you know now what to do. We will take that and we will solve each of these by setting them equal to zero. Remember our whole goal in this game, as it's always been since our algebra days, is getting the variable by itself. Typically, that's getting the x by itself. In this case, no different. So I'll start by subtracting the 1 on this. So I get 2 cosine x equals negative 1. Here, I will add 1 to both sides. Don't always subtract one. That doesn't always get rid of everything. You have to do the inverse operation. So that would give me cosine x equals 1 here. And that one I can actually start to solve. Because I know where cosine is equal to 1 at. That's when the x and the r are the same. That's only right here at 0. So one of my answers is 0. And remember, I'm only including 0 and excluding 2 pi because they're the same point. So there's one of my solutions, and that's the one and only solution for that equation. So the nice thing is over here, I don't have much else to do. And hopefully this looks familiar. We just found where cosine was equal to negative 1 half. So I will take this, and I will think about, well, since it's negative, I got to know what quadrant I'm in, right? And hopefully you all know that by now. Not here or there, that's where it's positive. We're looking at these two quadrants. And hopefully you know the reference angle for this. That gives me one half would be that 60 degrees or pi over three. And since we're dealing with pi over three, I will rewrite over here my pi as three pi over three. Because then I'll just have to subtract and add a 60 or pi over three to it. So my two answers for x is going to be 2 pi over 3 
and 4 pi over 3. But don't forget the other one that we had originally, which was 0. So our final answer that we should be putting on our answer blank would require us to put all three. So we would say our solution set, whether you write the curly braces or not, I don't care, would be 0, 2 pi over 3, and 4 pi over 3 in ascending order from smallest to biggest. And remember, again, it has to be between 0 and 2 pi. And because 4 pi over 3 is less than 2 pi, we are confident in our three answers. That's it for this segment. I'll see you guys soon. Keep on keeping on. Take care, everyone.